Hey everybody, it's Kyle Nelson here. I'm going to show you how I made a pin out of a deer antler. Now, my pin is uh, unique because I used an axis deer antler instead of a whitetail antler. Uh, it's a little bit straighter, as you can see, it's a little bit easier to cut up into turning blanks. So, let's go. All right, the first step is going to be cutting up the antler on the bandsaw. As you can see, I just hold it up to it, mark my line with a pencil. Doesn't have to be exact because we can trim it up later and we will. Um, mark two of those and cut them up and you got your blanks. The next step is drilling a hole into the peach blank. Uh, now I'm fortunate enough that I have a shopsmith with a horizontal pouring machine, but a drill press or even just a normal drill could accomplish this as long as you've got a steady hand. The next step is taking the blanks and just running them over a piece of sandpaper real quick. As you can see, it's a little shiny and the super glue won't stick to it as well. So if you just scuff it up a little bit with a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, uh, you'll be in good shape and the glue should stick to it with no problems. Now here's where I ran into a bit of a problem with this pin. I didn't check and see if the tube would fit inside of the blank before I glued it up. So as you can see, there was a piece of debris and it stuck in there. Um, so I tried the hacksaw at first with little to no success um, and decided since it's just going to be glued inside it doesn't have to be pretty so I took it to the bandsaw to cut off the excess piece and I'll take it back over to the workbench, scuff the glue off of the uh, excess piece and glue it back in and it'll be just fine. and it fit right in the other end, good as new, nobody will ever know the difference. Uh, you can tell that I'm using the Gorilla brand CA glue for this project. I really like it because it has a brush built into the lid, which is really nice for brushing it on those pin blanks. Now the next step is using what's called a barrel trimmer to basically make the edge of the barrel flush so that it'll sit on the lathe right and there won't be any gaps when we put the pin together. Uh, so I simply do this for each side of both blanks and it'll give us a nice flush surface that'll slide onto the lathe easily and uh, save us any heartache when we're putting the pin together. And now for the fun stuff, we start actually turning the pin. Um, I put one bushing on first, then one of my blanks, another bushing, the other blank, and another bushing. Turn it down to clean up the outside first and get it nice and smooth on both edges. That way you can slide the, uh, the tool rest up uh, to get you a little bit closer so you don't have any catches or anything like that while you're turning. Once you have that outer layer off, uh, you can start actually shaping the pin a little bit. As you can see, I'm turning the edges down to the bushing. You don't want to go past the bushing, but you want to get it right as close as you can to it so you have a smooth, flush surface when you put the pin together. Once you're done turning it and you get it close to the shape that you want, uh, that's the time to break out the sandpaper. I started 100 grit to clean up any major issues that I may have, uh, any kind of bumps or anything like that. Now there's going to be some differences in turning an antler versus turning wood. When you're turning wood, once you sand, I like to stop the lathe between each grit and sand vertically uh, with the grain so that it eliminates any scratch marks that you may have. But when you're dealing with an antler, there's not as much grain, so it doesn't really come into play. I like to sand up to 2500 grit. Nothing special about that number, it's just what I had on hand. And I know you can go higher, but I've found that 2500 seems to be sufficient for me at least. Now that we've got the pin polished how we want to, it's time to put it together. Now I did this without a pin press because I didn't have one at the time, uh, but you can use a typical F-style clamp as shown here. It works plenty fine if you're doing one. First step is to press in the tip. 
then the twist mechanism. Now make sure to not exceed the line, otherwise your pin will stick out too far. That's what I'm testing here. You put in the refill to make sure that it's not beyond where it should be, just by looks. The next step is to put the clip on the back uh, and then assemble the pin and you're good to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up.